At this point, we all understand that you have to grip a handlebar like you're holding a tennis racket, or like you're turning a doorknob, or like you're holding an ice cream cone. Skids and stuff. Which is why these grip donuts are eternally useless. Designed to reduce thumb calluses, we now know that your thumb should be nowhere near that part of the grip unless you have hands the size of Michael Jordan. At least my version of grip donuts are pretty tasty. We also all know we're supposed to have our elbows up when we're riding in technical terrain or off-road. Keep that good frame when you're traversing single track and then you're ready for anything. But a lot of people are doing it incorrectly. They just like lift those elbows and you still haven't got that control over the bike, what a proper stance will give you. The correct stance on a motorbike and in particular the correct grip on the handlebars, aside from being a safety factor, it can help with hand numbing, it will reduce arm pump, and it can also be a very energy saving technique. Even the simple concept of crossing a puddle can become quite arduous if not using the correct body positioning. So we're going to go through a little hack, a little cheat technique of how to get into that position and actually be strong through the chest and then you can work the bike with your core and the balance and control will come with just your stance on the bike. We are also going to go through how to set up your levers. A lot of people are setting their levers up incorrectly and it's also contributing to that arm pump. A bonus tip once you've mastered the main hack in this video is when you're in really rocky sections or even sandy or muddy, you can lock your elbows out to act as a steering damper. But you need to master the main hack first, else you could end up in even worse problems. First, let's go through how to hold the handlebar correctly. So you do have that doorknob or ice cream grip, which is once you're in the correct stance, is going to hold your elbows out anyway when you're cornering. It keeps those elbows up. They're there because that keeps you in a strong position on the bike and also good access to the levers and the throttle grip. Elbows up allows that movement on the bike and fine throttle control for cornering. The levers, a lot of people are running their levers too far down, wrapped around their handlebar, pointing down. But what's happening when you do that is you're putting your weight over the handlebar. You're having to then hold on tighter so you don't feel like you're falling off the front of your handlebars. Whereas if you bring your levers up a bit closer to level, your palm will be resting on top of the handlebar, allowing a relaxed grip and forearm. It's gonna be no death grip. You gotta have nice light hands. Your hands are just resting on the handlebars and using the levers. Your, control, your handlebars are only there to hold the controls in place. But the main thing with having your levers pointing down is when you're going for braking or you're going down a hill, you can't reach your levers anymore. You're having to pull your weight forward on the bike too much so that you can actually even engage your front brake lever or use your clutch or whatever. Whereas once they're up, it doesn't matter where you are on the bike, you can reach your levers. Set your levers, your front brake and your clutch so that you can actually reach them when you're as far back as you need to be in a braking position or heading down a hill, you want that weight over the rear wheel. Now, my hack for holding the handlebar automatically in a strong position. Let's uh, mount up on the bike and I'll take you through that. With this hack, it creates not just a floppy elbows up stance because you can still move around. You will then be able to have the correct torsion through your upper body, it's into your core and down into your foot pegs of the bike. And it makes that automatic position on the, on the bike come a lot more naturally. Holding that strong frame disconnects you from the bike. So you're in control rather than the bike being in control. It can be done in either a seated position or a standing position. On the adventure bikes with your tank bag in the way or your screen in the way, you might want to stand up for this. Um, on your enduro guys, you can probably just stay seated or stand up. Either way, we're going to get that same pull through our chest. You get your shoulders back, pull those shoulder blades back, and that also that you're going to feel that pulls your elbows back at the same time. And you've got to go just stretch nice and forward, poke that head out and your, elbow, your shoulders are now getting pulled back into your shoulder blades, into, into your back and that opens up your chest and you can take that feeling 
and then come back into your more standard standing position or even seated position and you hold that feeling through your chest and that is going to hold your upper body naturally and automatically in that strong position to allow you to have the bike move underneath of you while not having to death grip the handlebars. If you do this at the beginning of every ride, when you're hitting the bush, you'll notice that your body learns this position and you always stay strong through that, through your upper body then, through your chest, and it will hold that position and you won't have to put thought into it, you won't have to put energy into holding that position and you will automatically have that strong position on your bike. And the other major aspect of holding a motorcycle in a way that's going to allow you to save energy, be more safe and accomplish more feats on your motorcycle is learning to hold onto the bike with your feet correctly and your legs. And if you want to check out this video, listen with your feet, that's going to take you through it more in depth. And also if you enjoyed the video, get subscribed and cheers for watching. Peace.